Hello everyone. Welcome back to another Live at Five. I am here uh, where I am going to talk to you about a furniture item in the house that if objects, if inanimate objects can be political, which I think they can, um, then this is the most political object in Saarinen House, possibly um, in any house in Bloomfield Hills. And it's political for what it was attempting to do for the Finnish independence movement. And I am talking about our bench raya. And this is usually the thing that catches people's eye the most when they come on a tour of Saarinen House. And I like to joke that it is a carpet couch, um, but the proper term uh, would be bench raya. Raya, spelled R-Y-A in the Swedish uh, spelling, or R-Y-I-J-Y in the Finnish spelling, is a very ancient type of weaving. It's a traditional Nordic weave. Um, and raya weaving simply has a um, high pile. And so when you look at this rug and you see how it looks furry, um, that is what makes it a raya. Or another term would be a flossa rug. And most of the rugs that are here in Sarnen House are raya rugs. Um, and most of the decorative output of the Studio Loya Saarinen, Cranbrook's Weaving Workshop, were these high pile flossa or raya rugs. Why? Well, they are comfortable. If you think about walking over a raya rug, you're walking on the pile, and so it's going to be plush carpet. Um, it's going, instead of like a flat weave, like a killum rug, uh, these carpets are going to be softer underfoot. It also allows you to have great flexibility with the design because the design of these raya are coming from the knots and not the weave. And what I mean by that is that if we look at this intersection here, um, the red part, those are simply knotted threads. And that might be three or four individual strings cut to length and then tied together on the loom. So they're coming up like this. Now, this rug was used for over 20 years in the house. And so it's really been flattened with age. It's also possible that it started really quite short and was actually a shorter pile than even the rug right next to it, which has a longer nap to it. And if we look at the back of one of these raya, we can see how the design of the knots is reflected. So these are the back of the knots. And then the sort of natural color, that is the linen uh, weft that's woven across back and forth to actually form the structure. So you're seeing the back of the knots are the different colors. And then the long lines are the actual weaving structure. So today on Live at Five, I just uh, want to focus on the bench raya and why this is political. So for those of you who do not know uh, Finnish history deeply, Finland was a, for a very long time, was not a sort of modern nation state. It was part of Sweden. It was part of um, various empires through the Middle Ages. Uh, very nomadic people. It is the only European country that has an indigenous people, the Suomi people of the north of Finland. Uh, but in the 19th century, under Tsarist Russia, Finland was a district in the Russian Empire. Um, and just like those uh, friends in comrades in Moscow and in St. Petersburg, the Finns were unhappy under the Tsarist leadership. And so they fought for independence. Now, Finland would achieve independence because of the Russian Revolution. And so Finland became its own country on December 6th, 1918. They were granted independence from the um, Soviet revolutionaries. And the sort of fight for Finnish independence, though, started long before that. 
And in the late 19th century, there was a movement where if you were outright political, you could be arrested. Uh, but could you use art, craft, and design to be political, to fight for independence? And so there was a movement, the Finnish National Romantic Movement, of creating Finnish identity through architecture, through seating furniture, through uh, painting and mural arts. And one of the leading designers of that period, Askli Galangalan, Kalala, um, designed the first of many bench rayas. And these were woven at the Finnish Friends of Handicraft School. This is one that the Sarnins purchased for their home in Finland called the Flame Rug of 1902. And these began appearing in the late 1890s and then really took off after the 1900 World's Fair. Um, those of you who know Saarinen's history quite well know that Saarinen designed the Finnish pavilion at the 1900 World's Fair, and he incorporated bench rayas as an example of a seating furniture form that did not owe anything to other countries. So it wasn't neoclassical. It wasn't sort of Germanic, like the Biedermeier chairs in this room. It wasn't Swedish neoclassicism. Uh, it was instead this idea of the Finnish rural medieval Finn taking animal pelts, putting them on the cold stone wall, running them across the stone bench, and then you would sort of wrap up in it. And so the Raya rug became quite popular because of the uh, World's Fair and because of the acclaim that Finland got through its Elio Saarinen designed World's Fair building. And part of that acclaim was political. Uh, Western Europe and America were quite sympathetic with the desire for Finnish independence. And so uh, there was this sort of strong feeling that the Finnish pavilion was this mighty example of a nation about to be born. And so it became something of a status symbol in the sort of bourgeois um, Finnish homes to incorporate bench rayas as a statement of Finnish, of being allied with the Finnish independence cause. Now, if you look at enough of these, um, they're very often much, much furrier, much denser uh, with the Raya weave, and they often have decorative designs like the flame rug did, um, and Eliel Saarinen even designed some that were narrative, that told the story of the building of his building woven into the textile. Here at Cranbrook, it has these unusual arms. Usually they're built into an ingle nook, so it would actually be the whole sort of width of the room. Um, or they are simply left without uh, sort of major arms. If you look at the example in Helsinki, it has much smaller arms. So Saarinen sort of modernizes it for the Cranbrook uh, home. He gives it the Art Deco arms, which are made out of tropical hardwoods, ebony, um, and these were made by Tor Berglund, the Swedish craftsman who was working in the Cranbrook woodshop. And then, of course, the entire uh, bench raya, which right now it's held up through Velcro and a cleat. Um, I'm not sure how the Saarinen's hung it up, uh, but this was, of course, woven by Studio Loya Saarinen. And if you want to learn a lot more about the lady of the house, uh, Loya Saarinen and her commercial weaving workshop. At seven o'clock tonight, I will be delivering a lecture on Zoom, a virtual lecture about Studio Loya Saarinen and Cranbrook's Art Deco weaving enterprise. Um, and I'll teach you all about how Loya Saarinen was um, a weaver only in the sense of being a craftsperson. She did not actually weave these rugs. She ran a modern weaving enterprise where she was managing a large organization that had um, actual weavers underneath her, that she was working with client relations, with building up a brand that was Studio Loya Saarinen. So these rugs all come out of her workshop, though they are not touched with her hand. Um, and that bench raya actually complements a full sort of nook of bench raya. Um, this room is actually missing. There is another rug that goes right here. Um, we don't keep that rug out because it would be destroyed on tours. Uh, but imagine you come into this room for an evening drink or for a cigar after dinner, and you are in this full a uh, high pile 
fantasy of wool. Um, I, I find this room to be the sort of most comfortable and also the most kind of Nordic fantasy. And this bench raya is made up of uh, the original hand-woven seats, and then this is a 1982 reproduction from the Friends of Finnish Handicraft, uh, woven at a school in Helsinki because Loya Saarinen donated the original to the Finnish National Museum. So you can see the original back in Finland. And then the room looks out through this wall um, of glass, these French doors, which read as if they are another tapestry, a sort of tapestry of light leading out into the garden. I think what makes the architecture of Eliel Saarinen so incredible is the way that he material palette and color and light and shape so cohesively at every different scale. So here in the house, he designed everything from the teacups to the tables, to the furniture, to the uh, architecture, to the landscape itself. And he repeats shapes, he repeats line, he repeats sort of rhythms all across those different scales. I'll talk a little bit about attribution of the design of the rugs in my lecture, um, but we attribute these to Eliel and Loya Saarinen. She rarely, um, there, there are no surviving sketches of rugs by Loya Saarinen, only sketches by Eliel, but there are no sketches of these more geometric rugs. And so for a long time, as part of building her brand, she would attribute these and say, uh, exhibition rug by Loya Saarinen. But what does by exactly mean? Did she design this rug? Did her husband design this rug? Did her studio design this rug? It's part of the interesting sort of hunt of identification. Um, but I hope, actually, the more that we think about it, it's more of a, a way to break down ideas of the modernist myth of the genius artist sitting at her loom all day. Uh, that wasn't Loya Sarden. She was an entrepreneur at the head of a corporation. And so, yes, these rugs are by Loya Sarden. I hope you enjoyed this Live at Five. I'm keeping it short today. Um, you can register for the lecture tonight all the way through 6 o'clock p.m. Um, it's going to be virtual on Zoom, so you can watch it from anywhere. It will be one hour in length. And I'll be back next Tuesday for another Live at 5 on Instagram. It really feels very far apart now that I've gone down to one a week. Um, if you have any places that you want to go and explore, please send me a message. I'm always happy to go out and take the camera to a new location. And if you have any suggestions about a time that works better, let me know that too. Um, the world is changing and ever evolving. And so I want to make sure that Cranbrook's digital outreach is reaching you and making uh, the best impact that we can here at the Center for Collections and Research. Thanks for joining me. I'm Kevin Adkison. This has been another Live at Five coming to you from the home of Eliel and Loya Saarinen on Cranbrook's Academy Way with all of the beautiful arts and crafts, um, handmade objects in the Art Deco style. And just because I can't leave you without a glimpse into the dining room, I'll sign off with a walk into the Golden Dome. Thanks for watching, everyone.